Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a black hole calculator. And more specifically a calculator that allows us to find out how much energy and how much mass is released or absorbed by a black hole when it collides with something else. Or actually when something collides with a black hole. So let's explore this idea a little bit more and welcome to What The Math. Now, this black hole here is procedurally generated in Space Engine and it's actually a really cool star system. Here we have a very unusual brown dwarf or an L-type star that seems to also possess a few planets. I discovered this completely by accident, but thought it was actually a pretty good opportunity for me to talk about black hole collisions. So this here is actually not a star, it's more of a planetary object, it's a brown dwarf. Its mass, um, according to the simulation, is about 35 masses of Jupiter. And the reason why it does look like a star is simply because it uh, creates a lot of heat from the inside, but it doesn't have a nuclear reaction just yet. And this object also has its own planets, although technically I guess you would call these moons, because if it's a brown dwarf, these have to be moons. So these uh, objects, these moons, orbit around a black hole. Although, I guess it's a little bit off topic, but if you look really closely, you discover that even these moons have their own moons. So, there are technically moons of moons or moon moons. And here you can kind of see both of them moving across the night skies. But anyway, what we really want to talk about is what if all of these objects, and specifically, I guess, the uh, brown dwarf itself, collided with the black hole that's in the system. Because right now, if you look at the system, the um, objects in the system all orbit around the central black hole that's right there in the middle. With the black hole itself possessing several planets as well, suggesting that it's a really complex system. And we believe that these systems do exist, we just haven't really seen any just yet, mostly because it would be very difficult to find these black holes. Unless, of course, something collides with them. And to help us answer all of these questions, a particle physicist by the name of Alvaro Diaz created a beautiful and a relatively simple calculator that you can find in the description below that allows us to quite easily find out the parameters of a typical black hole if something collided with it and also the amount of energy released during this collision. So for example, let's just say that we have a black hole that has a mass of 5 suns and here a typical event horizon for this black hole would be about 14.77 kilometers. And if we were to try to imagine this black hole in the universe sandbox, this is sort of what it would look like. It's a pretty small, tiny spot right there in the middle with the size of, I guess, a relatively large city on the planet Earth. So let's just say that something falls into this black hole. Let's start with a typical star. So here we have a star that's about three masses of the sun falling into this black hole. And you'll notice that at the end of the collision, the mass of the black hole is 7.91 masses of the sun. Its event horizon has increased to about 23.4 kilometers. And this number shows you the total growth of the black hole in terms of size. So it grew by about 58%. But why exactly is it not 8 masses of the sun? I mean, 3 plus 5 should be 8, right? Well, during the collision, we also released a lot of energy mostly because of the relativistic effects caused by the acceleration of matter here as it falls into the black hole. So right at this moment when it starts falling uh, into the actual black hole, a lot of the matter will be moving so fast and with so much kinetic energy that it will essentially um, transfer all of this mass into energy and it will generate a really large explosion which unfortunately didn't really happen here because our black hole just kind of ate everything. In reality though, it would look something like this. There would be a very, very powerful, very large explosion, um, essentially equivalent to a tremendously powerful supernova. And in this case, uh, from, I guess, three masses of the sun, the amount of energy released is equivalent to 322 bathy or pho, which is a unit used for really large amounts of energy. And a typical large supernova, type 2 supernova, will normally produce about one full of energy. Normally maybe a little bit more, one, one and a half or so. So this collision generated 321 times more energy. And that's by using a relatively small size in terms of mass. It's a little bit more massive than our own sun, but way, way less massive than some of the other stars out there. 
Okay, so let's try this with something else. Oh, and by the way, so the 0.09 masses of the sun became this. This is the energy released that used to be mass. So now let's try this with the brown dwarf that we have in this system. First of all, this black hole has a mass of exactly five masses of the sun as well. I think that's completely by accident. And it's going to be colliding with an object that is equivalent to 35 Jupiters, which according to my calculator is equivalent to 11,130 Earths. And here, obviously, the mass of the final black hole is not really dramatically larger. It only increased by about 0.64%. But look at the amount of energy this releases. Three and a half more than a typical supernova. So even a brown dwarf like the one you see right here that's technically just a planet, if it were to collide with a black hole, it would release more energy than a typical supernova. And it would be visible from pretty much everywhere in the galaxy, at least if it happened in our own galaxy. So since we haven't really seen that many events similar to this, we know that these events are not very frequent. We haven't really seen any unusual supernova happening for no reason in the last few decades, or basically since the advances in telescope uh, technology. And because of this, we believe that uh, black holes basically absorbing planets or absorbing stars is not a very frequent phenomenon. But obviously even a smaller object uh, like a moon would produce a tremendous amount of energy, which is why even though very small particles are falling into the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star, even these tiny particles will produce enough effect for us to see from really far away. This is at a distance of over 25,000 light years away from us, and we can normally see them pretty easily. And a few months ago I reported that there were these unusual flashes in the middle of our galaxy that suggested that something was happening there and something was being swallowed. You can actually check out this video in the description below. And this video with, I guess, this guy right here, this is Anton in the past, did not really explain what was happening, but we know that something was swallowed by the black hole. And that something did not have to be big either, it could have been just particles. Because the amount of energy that is being produced by a typical black hole when it swallows something is absolutely mind-blowing. Now before I finish this video, I wanted to do one more calculation. I wanted to actually find out what would need to be sort of swallowed by a central black hole in the middle of our own galaxy for it to become really dangerous for us here on Earth. In other words, let's just say our black hole swallows something and it generates such a tremendously powerful flash that suddenly this flash becomes deadly to humans, to basically life here on Earth. Now, the only thing we can kind of speculate here is, of course, what exactly would be dangerous. And based on the calculations, if, for example, a supernova happened at a distance of about 30 light years away from our planet, it would be pretty dangerous. Most scientists believe that the amount of radiation produced here would be um, quite detrimental to the atmosphere of our planet and might even cause some kind of an extinction event. So let's just say that what we have to produce is the energy equivalent of a supernova at a distance of about 30 light years. Well, if you were to try to estimate how much energy has to be released at a distance of 26,000 light years away from us, there's a very easy formula we can use for brightness versus distance that allows us to calculate how big of an object it would have to be. So here, if uh, we travel every single part of a distance, the relationship here is described as luminosity over distance squared. So in other words, for a distance of about 26,000 light years, which is about 1,000 times more than the distance to a potentially dangerous supernova, here what we'll get is about a million. So in other words, if something equivalent to million supernova happened at a distance of 26,000 light years away from us, it would be potentially dangerous to planet Earth. And using this calculator here, we can totally figure it out. So first of all, the black hole mass for Sagittarius A star is about 4.3 million masses of the Sun. This creates the event horizon of about 12.7 million kilometers. So it's a really, really large event horizon. And now what we have to do is figure out how much mass we need to actually throw into this black hole if we want to create something equivalent to a million supernova. If this object is about 1,000 suns in mass, it will already generate 107,000 fo, which is about one-tenth to where we need to be. So here, 
an object that's about 10,000 suns will generate nearly enough energy to potentially cause some kind of an extinction event. And although this is a very simple calculator and it implies that this object has to be a single piece, we could still use these results to estimate the total mass of matter that would have to fall into the supermassive black hole to create enough energy to cause potential concern for Earthlings. Which, by the way, would also turn our beautiful black hole that's relatively inactive right now into what would basically be a quasar, an active galactic nuclear galaxy that has tremendous power generated in the center that prevents not only life from forming on uh, planets in this galaxy, but it actually also prevents the formation of stars. Now, 10,000 masses of the sun might not be enough to do that, but it's definitely enough to maybe destroy life on Earth, or at least cause a massive extinction event. Well, anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. It's a very sort of speculative video that uses this cool calculator that I found online. Check it out in the description below, and also thank you so much for watching. And if you actually calculate something else cool using this calculator, do post it in the comments below. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, share this with someone who loves science, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.